This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by the Dark Lord himself, Adam Booth. <coughs> Adam, I want your instant reaction to those scorecards because a lot of people's opinions were that Josh won that a lot wider than what the scorecards are. And Kala's reaction to that was that he said he actually was worried. At the second scorecard when they announced that, he thought we are getting done here. Were you the same? Absolutely. It was 9-3 uh, to Josh, if I was, uh, and, and I think I'm being generous with that, and if I was to give it a push, I'd make it 8-4, but, to, uh, <laughs> but to, um, to make that a draw, or by one round, leaves me with uh, little or no confidence in uh, the Boxing Board of Control officials judging. It was awful. And this is, you're talking about people's livelihoods and their health and their careers and their hopes and their dreams and their families. And to do that and just to walk away from it, having, you know, okay, it's one of two things, right? To, to score it that way is one of two things. And I'm not going to say either of them because I don't want to. But, um, yeah, very disappointed in those judges. What, what do we do as a sport to combat this? You're someone that's been in this sport for so many years. I'm sure you have an idea in your head. Do you have a way of combating the, this judging system to make it more fair across the board? More what do you mean? Fair, there's fair and there's competent, right? There's, there's, there's but this is subjective, Adam, right? So, so there's always going to be that element of someone somewhere watching something different to how me and you watch it or someone else, right? Yes, absolutely. But in a fight with a low land count like today, if you're going to get it wrong in a fight like tonight, you're going to get it wrong in a lot of fights um, because it was obvious how these rounds were going. It was obvious to pretty much everyone. Uh, and I even think that I saw somebody showed me even Match from Boxing who uh, Ishmael Davis promoter had it 11-1. Um, you know, we're here again and this won't be the last time. What can be done? I don't know. Um, it's just a shame that uh, people do this. Talk to me about, you know, Josh Kelly tonight, his performance. Were you happy with what you've seen in there? Were you, do, you, do you see improvements that you can make going off that performance? So it was been out of the ring since December. And, you know, obviously the disappointment of it not being Liam Smith and it being Ishmael Davis meant that we had to change certain things. So I thought he did that really well. I thought he kept his head on. I thought Ishmael Davis was fantastic. You know that he gives, you know, he's got big, long arms, short torso and a short neck. So we knew that to find the openings was going to be difficult. And we knew that he was going to try and like leech that distance. And he's a strong fella and he's definitely absolutely going to be a world-class fighter. Um, and so, you know, if I, if I take everything into account, I'll go back and I'll analyse it. I thought for the majority of the fight, he did exactly what he was supposed to. Sometimes when you feel that comfortable in there, the, the, the risk is complacency. I thought he, um, I think mentally, he probably took his foot off the gas with about three rounds to go. Um, and then there was the cut, I think, in the 11th or the 10th. And then at the start of the 12th, they went, they went out to touch gloves and they bumped heads. And where they bumped heads was on the cut. And the cut immediately started bleeding. And then, and then I think there was a forearm that hit him on the nose, which opened up the cut on his nose. And he said to me, like, he wasn't hurt, but he just couldn't see anything because he had blood in his eyes. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm actually really pleased that with all that mayhem, and you've got a really strong, capable fella swinging for his life because he knew that he had to win by stoppage, to be able to sort of ride that reckless storm out in that fashion, you know, kudos to him. It's another experience for Josh. Um, I know he can be a lot better than that. And, you know, he's just beaten an unbeaten fighter, a really good fighter. Uh, you know, 10 2, 9 3. I spoke with Kala, and my question to Kala was what do you do with Josh next? What route do you go down? Do you go for a world title route? Do you go down the domestic route? Do you fight someone like Conor Ben, which is a massive fight in the northeast of, of England? What do you want? You're someone who probably has already mapped out in your brain Josh's next move. 
Tell me what, what Adam Booth thinks is the best next move for Josh. I just, I, now I just want him to have the biggest fights that he can have. Any of them. Chris Eubank Jr., Conor Ben, any of them. You know, people are going to see the blood on his face in this one and the, and the ridiculously close scorecards and think, oh, OK, he doesn't like pressure. OK, good. I hope, that, I hope that the ones that are trying to avoid fighting him now grow some bollocks and say, yeah, I'll take him. He, I can deal with him. And then we'll get the big fights. Liam Smith? He's in our rearview mirror now. We've wasted a lot of time on that. Is that, is that you saying, kind of, at this point now that you, you are looking ahead and, and that won't be something that you will be looking to do? It's, I was told a long time before that he won't make that date, he won't make that date, and I put my trust in it. And, and if it hadn't been for, for, for Spencer Brown and Turkey Al Sheikh and Ishmael Davis, if it hadn't been for that, Josh wouldn't have been in the ring tonight. He would have trained for eight or nine months without a penny at the end of it and they would have had to go through the process again and once you once someone shows it shows their true face and once you can't trust someone if you go back and you get let down again that's your own fault and i'm not prepared to make that mistake on josh's behalf 154 160 where, where do you see josh best adam he's a 154 fighter but he's a stocky kid and he moves well and he, he he's strong um wherever the right fight presents itself. He's a 154 fighter, but if the opportunity for a big fight is at 160, then we'll do it. Big names, world names, names out there that you think Josh Kelly can beat at world level. Who are those? You know, people maybe with titles at the moment that you want Josh Kelly to get a chance against. I'm not going to name any more names, but he's 30 years old. He's learned a lot in the 19 fights that he's had. And I'm ready, and he's ready, to make the biggest fights for him, whatever that is. Adam Booth, pleasure, thank you. Thanks, Con.